Welcome back. So over the weekend, while I was waiting for the police to arrive, I decided I'd get the holes drilled there in the keel, at least the one in the back. So as you can see, I put the little hole there in my little template, and uh, you know I've got that template bolted into place so it really can't move around. And just using the right angle air drill here, because just a normal drill wouldn't fit in that space. So as you can see, started out with a sort of medium length bit, just to get through the first of it. And uh, as you can see there, I've got that other little quarter inch rod there coming from my cardboard template on the other side just to help me keep everything aligned, even though um, my little jig there is bolted into place. I still want to have, you know, the holes on one side to the other lining up nicely. So I took the medium sized drill and took that through as far as I could before it hit the little fixture. And uh, then I needed to change it out to a longer bit and fortunately um, you know I have a varying lengths of bits there in quarter inch but uh, yeah it was um, quite a lot of carbon there to drill through and there was a there is sort of a cavity in behind there where there is some foam um, or at least it felt like that and from memory I think that that's what the case was so there I'm taking out the medium sized bit and put the longer one in so I can get all the way through and you know, now that the hole's in there, I don't really need that other rod there to help align everything. And I'm just checking there to make sure I've got enough length to get all the way through, which I did. So yeah, it's really nice having these uh, this right angle air tool. And that one actually has got quite a lot of grunt. And what I ended up doing after I did the pilot hole, uh, the next step was to enlarge it out to half inch from the quarter inch. So I decided I was going to use the air tool, um, just a regular right angle one that I could mount um, a step drill into. And you know I've got, and I bought a brand new step drill bit for that. But when I started doing that and drilling that out, it was just uh, there wasn't just enough, um, you know, wasn't enough power in the air drill to push the step drill all the way through it just kept sort of you know grinding to a halt and I think it's partly because you know the compressor I have only a small one now it doesn't have quite as much um, you know pressure and, and volume on it as what the big one used to have so there you can see I got the pilot hole all the way through on that side and then uh, did the one on the other side so what I end up having to do to enlarge the hole out to half inch was just slowly step through a bunch of bits to uh, take it up to half inch so needless to say it took quite a while to, to just to get these holes through and fortunately they lined up pretty nicely and so you know the half inch rod that I was taking through there it didn't take much to just slide that into place as you'll see here shortly uh, but yeah it would have been nice to have an air tool the same as this one that you could just basically put any bit into this one here actually has screw in bits so they're very special and of course I don't have a, a step drill that fits that particular drill so anyway you can't have all the tools you just got to you know sometimes you just got to make do with what you've got so there you can see it come out the other side there and uh, that was when I you know did all the work to step it up and as you can see I've done it now got the half inch hole all the way through and just mock the pulleys into place and you can see I've had to clear out around the top edge and also the bottom edge of the pulleys as well because uh, the original cut that I did just wasn't allowing enough room uh, so that's just mocked into place here and I've got my little spacer in the middle there which is a three quarter inch tube with a half inch ID so that adds extra support there so that rod won't flex and uh, I'm still going to do a few things in there before I get that you know finally fit and up the front here you can see I've got the fixture in and I figured out where the hole needed to be in that one uh, it was a different position so got my jig done with that and drilled that hole on both sides and then enlarged that with a step drill that was pretty easy to do and there you can see I've got the half inch right in there now I'm just fitting it and now I've got the pulleys arrived and well as you saw just now so there's just mocking one into place and just double checking to make sure that the alignment is correct and the, I don't know if you can see that but it lines up nicely with the upper wheel and uh, of course the bottom wheel still lining up the same but you know that's just a matter of putting the spaces in the right place so I went up to Brits um, to take those rods and just drill holes in the ends of them there 
so I could tap them with a uh, 1032 thread so I can put some AN3 bolts in there uh, to hold them in place so they don't sort of you know slide out of the keel uh, left or right so I ended up just drilling that through to I don't know an inch and a quarter deep and then tapped it 1032 so as you'll see here in a little bit and you know obviously just uh, holes on either end of the two rods so it didn't take long uh, to do that and it's nice to have access to the lathe thanks again Britt for allowing me to use your shop for these different uh, activities that I've got so here I've got the tap uh, 1032 and just put a little bit of um, of the tap fluid on there and these ones are just do it by hand so you just spin that it's a bit hard to film and do it so back in the shop now um, these are some strips of aluminum that um, I cut at Britt's place and these are going to make the little safety guards there around the pulley so if the cable comes loose it doesn't slip out of place um, so I need to drill a half inch hole in either end you see I've got all four of them just taped together so I can just drill them all at once and not have to you know do them each individually so I just run in the centering bit there uh, and I'd already hole punched uh, where I wanted the hole to be and just basically center of that thing and and a uh, half an inch in from the end and then I just use the uh, the step drill to take that up to half inch so it can slide over that main half inch rod and there's the new step step drill bit that I bought you know, some people don't like these step drills but man I tell you, you save a lot of time um, having these and they really if, if they're sharp they do an amazing job so and then because of how deep this is I had to reset the table here just lift it up a little bit uh, because you know our drill press there doesn't have like a lot of uh, travel on it so, you know for you know for when you're using a step drill it has quite a lot of length to it so you just got to sort of drill half of it and then lift the table up and then drill the other half through to uh, you know complete the hole all the way through uh, but really not a big deal so these little guards that they once I uh, drilled the holes in those I just bent them at the middle part over the half inch rod um, so they wrap around on themselves as you'll see here in a second and then I had to drill another hole through them in, in order to put a little rivet through there which it you know has a close tolerance to uh, the actual pulley that it wraps around and it just stops it so the cable can't come out so here I've already sent a punch where the hole's going to be and because it's wrapped around I'm just putting it around a, a bit of wood there so I can drill all the way through um, and you know as I said I've sent a punch those and and so I'm just drilling it with a centering drill there just to get the hole started so it doesn't walk when I get the uh, eighth inch drill on there and so yeah just had to drill these through with an eighth inch um, drill bit and then just putting an eighth inch long rivet in there which you'll see here in a minute and you know these already had these for the smaller pulleys but of course you know the, sm the ones for the smaller pulleys don't work on the larger pulley so I had to make these as well so you know even when you think oh well, I'm just going to change the pulley out you always <laughs> end up creating more work for yourself for things that you know some things you anticipate and other things you're just like yeah well, I'll do that but you know, how long is it going to take you know so there I've got that centered out and there I've got a little bit of half inch right in there just to keep the holes in alignment um, you know before I go drilling all the way through because I wanted that hole the main hole half inch hole to be you know perfectly sort of parallel from from one side to the other so I just held that right in place because these little metal brackets are fairly flexible because they're only aluminum and you know I think they're only 60 thou or 50 thou thick so I just drill all the way through and obviously through the wood as well and then once that's through you can see if I put that I'll put that together with the one of the pulleys as you can see there and put my little short bit of half inch through there just to line everything up then that hole is just beyond the edge of the pulley and so you put one of these rivets through there and you see it's not it's designed to not touch the pulley but be close enough that the cable can't slip out of there 
if the cable goes loose and hangs down. So then I just trim the rivet off a little bit because those rivets are just a little bit too long. And just use the trimming tool to take off about an eighth of an inch there. And then just put it through the hole and uh, just um, crimp the end of it with, um, with the rivet gun there as you'll see and I didn't really need to put that on there but anyway you get the idea so I put that back through there again and then just um, grab those the rivet pliers or whatever you want to call them rivet it's not really a gun. These are the ones you use for the sort of rivets on nut plates and stuff, but it does the same thing. You just crimp the end of that. And that way it can't fall out. And of course, you know, you can take that bracket off the, the pulley wheel there. So it doesn't matter that you crimp that on. It doesn't really mean that you're locked into anything. So it just slides apart. So um, this was the other bracket there for the uh, elevator. Bell crank, so Brit welded those two bigger ears on there, and so now I had to match drill the holes back through there again. This is the ones on the end for quarter inch, so just drilling that back through the bottom plate, and then there was another quarter inch one uh, on the other end of it, and then a, a three eighths uh, hole through the middle of it that had some of those little uh, bronze bushings in place. And you know, bronze bushings, three eighths of an inch uh, OD on them, and quarter inch ID, so because they take an AN4 bolt through the mill. So there you can see I've just drilled all three holes. So that bracket now is ready to test fit in place, and you'll see that in a uh, future video coming up. So there's the end of the rods now, and I've got my little shortest hardware I could get there. Uh, these are AN4, I think dash fours or something. Oh, sorry, AN3 dash fours. And so I wanted them um, to go in further than that. So I just drilled out the first little bit of thread in there uh, so the bolt can go all the way tight. And so now what I'm doing here is just measuring up uh, everything I have for the nose section there and figuring out uh, how long my uh, left and right spacers need to be that go from the inside of the keel. So I just you know figured out what the total length was. And, and uh, also too, I've gone in here with a little um, Dremel tool and with the cutoff wheel and as you can see there I've cut off the old brackets that were sitting on the floor because they were just in the way now I didn't need them for anything they are literally just going to be in the way and as you can see now I've gone and put the front one in place and this is actually bolted in there and I put the cables there just to see how everything's lining up obviously the cables don't pull to the front like I've got them set right now but I just wanted to sort of mock it up so that's done and uh, and from the inside there you'll be able to see that I've just got um, some washers on there with the AN3 bolt uh, from inside the cabin just holding that in place and I may need to reinforce that more into the keel uh, but for right now I've just got the half inch you know through the the layers of um, carbon there it's not uh, and there's core in there but I'm not sort of running it under any real compression so it's not going to crush it or anything like that so anyway hopefully next time you'll see that I've got the cables in place and maybe I fix this problem so that's the update for the first half of the week. Thanks again for watching and tune in again on Saturday.